Temta. Abdur Kulshaiwat Biwasa Muspa Temta. Greetings, everyone. Begin all things by first using the all. I am Sa Setara Ale, a white female of Anian Wea and Panamanian descent. This is our 78th year, 16th month, 17th day on our Yamasa calendar, which is April 23rd, 2024 of the Gregorian calendar. From the desktop of Plenipotentiary of Earth and Chief Nani Shabuel, registered copyright trademark of the Atsukata Nation of Yamasee Moors. This interview series with the Plenipotentiary of Earth and Chief Nani Shabuel, registered copyright trademark of the Atsukata Nation of Yamasee Moors by the White Atoklans, of white work is brought to you courtesy of, and not limited to the following so-called conscious podcasters and representatives of the so-called conscious and or black community. Firstly, with honors, Bobby Hemet, who acknowledged Chief's lean on the White House. Beneath him lies Malefa Asante, PhD, and Clyde Ledbetter Jr., PhD, both acknowledged our nation at Sakata Nation of Yamasee Moors in their book, Contemporary Critical Thought in Africology and Africana Studies. At Sakata Nation of Yamasee Moors is mentioned as one out of only three organizations of African descent out of the 103 universal periodic review submissions that were filed on the United States of America in 2010. Plenty Potentia of Earth and Chief Nani Shabuel, registered copyright trademark of the Atsukata Nation of Yamasee Moors, has subsequently filed a UPR in 2019 on the United States of America. Both Universal Periodic Reviews, or UPRs, are published on the United Nations website. 19 Keys, Riza Islam in California, Dom Luker, Philip Scott, Will Rattigan, of YouTube channel Reason with Radigan, who breached a contractual agreement to give Chief a three to four hour platform to discuss who we are as the dark skinned race on the planet and the solution for us to call ourselves white. He got unreasonably rattled and cut Chief from speaking by kicking him off the show twice within an hour and six minutes. He had no solution to offer Black people and refused to keep his word to hear Chief's solution for Black people. Muta Baruka, who uploaded Chief's first interview with Reason with Radigan and published it on his own YouTube channel. He created a thumbnail with a graphically imposed image of Chief with the words, I am white, written above the plenipotentiary's head. And then Muta Baruka, he put his own image beside Chief to appear like he's standing with the plenipotentiary, but he never states he is white, nor does Muta Baruka claim that he is white in that video and has disabled the comments. Killer Mike, Black Magic 363. Rick Smith, a pale man who is the author of The Moor, The Mason, and The Alien, who revealed the body of St. Isa, a dark man, misnomer black man, is in Jerusalem, which proves he was never pale. No one can go there to see the body without an invite from the Vatican. The Vatican has to stamp your passport to allow you to go there. Rick Smith, who has emailed and responded to Chief on Facebook and LinkedIn multiple times, said he respected him, but he lives a life in the matrix. Peter Moon, author of the Montauk Book of the Dead, who did not reply to Chief's emails, which was sent to him via his publisher. Roland Martin, Sherry Peel Jackson, who had Facebook conversations with, uh, who we've had Facebook conversations with on her page in the comments of her posts. When we presented the solution of changing her race to white and doing the autochthon standing process, to remove herself from being taxed by the IRS, she still refused to do the process. Joy Bulamweni of the Algorithmic Justice League, Mother America Publishing, Sa Netter, Sabir Bey, Taj Tariq Bey, Nakeem Bey, Hakeem Bey, Queen Afua, Queen Valara, Rod Hayes, Rare Bird, Young Elder, Yusuf Ellen Jonah Bey, who both 
try to diss the SF-181, but now tell people, I told y'all you got to do the SF-181. Great Seal, Farrakhan, Chief sent a DM to him on Twitter, now called X. Farrakhan never responded. Don Nicoleone, who told Chief over the phone when they spoke that Atum Ray is not an ADX. His family knows he's not there. The government knows he's not there. And the government does not want that information to get out. If you can walk through concrete, you can get out. One time after they spoke, Chief came in on the last bit of her radio show. An associate of Don Nicoleone knew about the SF-181 and presented it to her on air that day. All she kept saying was, help me out here. What am I looking at? Don Nicoleone filibustered to conveniently run out of time and instead talked about it in an overtime, an overtime in her off-air show. The Sabians or Nuabians, Dusua York, Victoria Broussard, attorney at law, Adrian Patrick, attorney at law, Hebrew Israelites, Red Pill, Blue Pill, Sarah Sudansetti, who refused to show up for a scheduled live debate he agreed to with Chief in 2016. Professor Griff, who Chief left the voicemail with, and he never returned his call. Dr. Cornell West, who agreed to endorse the SF-181, but then turned around and said he wanted to be like Jesus and endorsed Bernie Sanders for President of the United States. Dr. David M. Hotep author of the book, The First Americans Were Africans. He was given the SF-181 by our associate, and he refused to be clear over the phone with Chief about whether he faxed it or not. Shaharazad Ali, author of The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman and The Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man, who, when presented via email with the commercial fact that there are no Black racial groups of Africa and that she should change the titles of her books, she threatened legal action if we mentioned her in association with our nation. Billy Carson, Karen Hudez smith Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, who just recently solidified the commercial fact by stating that criminal activity is Black culture. In short, Black people are sinful, as the etymology of crime means sinfulness. The etymology of sin is to miss the mark, as in a game of archery. So, Black people have missed the mark of correctly self-identifying as white. Black people, mark the white box on the SF-181. NAACP, National Action Network, NAAIP, Draconis Rex, Hellraiser, Brother Truth, Mon3, Adat Mac on uh, oh, any platform she could get on. It's or he or it, I don't know. It goes hopping from hotel room to hotel room, hustling the SF-181, wearing demon slit eyes. It's somehow appealing to those who lack discernment, but they have been warned via email not to fall for this con man hustler pilfering step one of our talk and standing process, charging $15 up to $40 to do a free form. Isis Wisdom, Tiffany Israel, who came on our free webinar just to get the ASP instructions package and then turned around and sold them to people. She added an extreme number of alternate pages to the SF-181 attachments that have no relevance and contributed to the fax line to OMB being jammed for months with a busy signal. Chief had to find an alternative backup fax line for the white Atoftans to then use. Usar, polite, Mark Kishan Christopher with his fraudulent quantum live life claim for those with a black status was the impetus for why Chief now wears his namuz only. Chief attended a Zoom Mark held where Chief was wearing his namus and Mark singled Chief out and asked him in a very derogatory way, are you comfortable with that headgear upon your head? The Chief said, yes. Mark kicked him out of the Zoom meeting when he lost the battle to Chief's rebuttals. Global African Congress out of the UK. 
Russell Gould, Phil Valentine, who did call Chief but left a message that was not honorable enough to incline Chief to return his call. Panic out of New York, the Black conscious community, the Black occult community, the New Age community, the UFO community, Anu L. Bay of the Amexa Moors, Dr. Ali Muhammad, Anna Von Wrights, Chief emailed her directly with no response. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, author of the ISIS papers, had the SF-181 put in her hand by one of our associates and was asked, why are we still calling ourselves black? She squirmed in her chair. This was all during her presentation at Howard University. She avoided the question and she never came back to Howard University again after speaking there monthly. And then she died about three months later. Malik Shabazz, chief was counsel for an indigenous Yamasi official for a court case in Dublin, Georgia, who happened to meet Malik Shabazz at an event in Atlanta and he asked him to look over the court briefings that chief prepared. Malik Shabazz looked at the first page stopped at the second page, handed the Sherlock's court documents back to him and said, this is over my head. Chief also called and left a message with Malik Shabazz, but he never called back. Benjamin Crump was a keynote speaker at the Working Group of Experts for People of African Descent, and Chief was also present at that UN meeting. We noticed after the meeting that Benjamin Crump's race and ethnicity was white. Benjamin Crump knows black has no standing at law and that's why he changed his ethnicity and race to white. Chief did a five day comment number 167 about Ben Crump's race change to white. A week later, his race no longer showed white, but instead dashes. As of recently, when searching for the celebpie.com site where we saw Ben Crump's race as white and then dashes, we no longer see the site at all. It's shut down, non-existent, can't be reached. So welcome to the real. Elihu Pleasant Bay, author of The Exhuming of a Nation. He acknowledged the lean on the White House, but didn't want to work with Chief. Aline Bay. Copy the conversation Chief had with a former member of our nation. Alim stole what our nation posted and then cut and pasted it to his own website as if he did it. Posthumous David Wynn Miller, whom Chief has spoken with directly over the phone. Posthumous regard to the late Kevin Samuels. Why did Talkins on Chief's direction contacted Kevin Samuels to let him know via email to stop calling himself Black? due to the amount of haters, especially Black women, who hated Kevin Samuel's show for revealing the truth about Black women's unreasonable demands, their delusion, and failure at their relationships. He continued to call himself Black. All the above claim to want to talk about topics others are afraid to talk about. When contacted about interviewing, discussing, listening, or working with Plenty Potentiary of Earth and Chief Nine Shabawale, registered copyright trademark of the Atsakata Nation and Yamasee Moors. They all ignored Chief, stayed silent, or refused. So it is clear that those below Bobby Hemet are not about freedom. They want to be exotic Negroes on the plantation. So white Atoklans are the only ones that can discuss topics Black people are afraid to talk about. And for, the, for this reason now, every Tuesday, White Atoklans will interview Plenty Potentiary of Earth and Chief Nani Shabuel, registered copyright trademark of the Asakata Nation of Yamasee Moors, and ask questions regarding current subjects and events that are happening and how it relates to indigenous White Atoklans. Abi Ugadur, White Power. We are here today because when something's so nice, you may need to do it twice. Well, we discussed some hot topics in the news um, a few weeks ago. And because news is changing so rapidly, this is something that we need to revisit and explore an array 
of topics that white work has found interesting to present to our plenipotentiary. So without further ado, I will present my first hot topic to Chief. It's a clip that I saw on Instagram that is so worthy of um, follow-up <laughs> for an answer. The clip is cut at a particular moment, Chief, and I'm gonna bring you on camera here. I wanna thank you for being here. Let me get you on. There you are. Thank you for being here, Chief. Timta, do ko shaiwa biwa samus pa Timta. You're quite welcome. Much appreciated for everyone being here. All right. So as you listen to this clip, Chief, if you will, <clears throat> um, you'll see this woman here, and then the man is interviewing her. Uh, just respond to her question at the end. Let's see if I can do this part quickly. Look, land is not a source of wealth. It's expensive dirt unless you develop it. And it's very difficult to develop land in a sustainable way so that it creates jobs and creates food or produces food. It's very difficult to do that. And if you just own a piece of land that no one wants to buy, it has no value to you at all. Now, the question we need to ask about land in South Africa is why our most fertile land that is in very large measure in black hands produces very little food and almost no jobs. The Ingonyama Trust. Why? Beautiful, fertile land. Why is this producing huge amounts of food and large numbers of jobs? Because you can create hundreds of thousands of jobs in agriculture if it's done properly. However, South African land is not in black hands. Majority of South African no. land is not in black Let's hands. look at the fertile land. Let's just yeah. look at the fertile land. The last figure I saw was that 73% of KwaZulu-Natal is in black hands. That is seriously fertile land. Mm. Rain sun, everything you want. Now look at that land and say, is it producing food and jobs? Because that's what you want land for. You want land so people can get jobs and they can eat. Mm. That's the value of land to a country and to individuals, jobs and food. Now why is our most fertile land not producing jobs and food. That is the most fundamental question about land we need to be asking in South Africa. Look. Okay, so she's taking the position that is the, the pull yourself up by the bootstraps, by your own bootstrap sort of thing, that the land is there, you're supposedly in control of it. Why aren't they able to produce foods and food and jobs from the land that they are saying is fertile and that they are in control of? And so it's a layered question where you're forced to accept those precepts to the question. So what is the, the response to something like that? Well, the response is that's for corporations. The Spanish were the first to break land up into what we call parcels today. The Spanish did that first. If you look at all ancient cultures, everyone shared the land. So there were some people that were good at agriculturalists. There were some that were good at harvesting, some were good at uh, processing, you know, whether it's the wheat, the barley, the grain, what have you. She's coming from a perspective of an Amorite raised in a corporate system. That is the mentality that she is coming from. As she's saying, it has no value if no one wants to buy it. Oh, the land is very difficult to, you know, hard to produce. If you're using metal tools, yeah. You're supposed to be using copper when you're farming, not copper tools, not metal. Even the Egyptians, our, our ancient ancestors were using 
copper as a basis to do the masonry. The grave robbers used copper to rob the graves of the aferti that were put in the sarcophaguses and buried in the Valley of the Kings and other places. So her perspective is a perspective of a corporation because the concept of sharing is poisonous to people that are capitalists. Where did you get the land? How did you acquire the land? Who told you the land has to be used primarily for development? It has to be worth the value. What is the value based on? Who put the value? How did the value come to be based on? And because so many black people in South Africa or the Africans have the land, she said it's not being developed based on whose perception you can't eat 20 acres of apples. So if you don't have a market for apples, you're only going to plant a certain amount. So she's coming from a corporate mindset. She's not coming from the mindset of uh, a true community because once everyone has their own hut, they're all on the land, sharing the land, they can protest and fight and everything. They don't have to worry about where they're going to lay their head. Once they know how to grow food, they're not going to worry about starving. See, you see how she omitted those points. We got to give people jobs, 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 jobs. But what did Rabbi Finkelstein say? That if the Jebusites, they don't work. They said, okay, the going on and work, we give everyone jobs, we give them jobs. But meanwhile, they'll play the stock market, they'll play you know, high finance to make money that way. And now there's, there's more value. So she's coming from the perspective of an Amorite who's, who's a corporation. Tell those people in South Africa that they're actually white. She's probably an Afrikaner, a Dutch that migrated down there, right? Tell, what about the De Beers? The De Beers got the diamond market locked up and only released a certain amount. The, De Beers, the diamonds are plentiful. See how she's going into land and farming and ignoring the diamonds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, and like Rabbi Finkelstein said, if they release all the diamonds they have, they'll be, the, the cost will drop to a bun, uh, what do you call it, a dozen roses. If this is an excellent answer because like I said, I knew there was something wrong with her question where she had to create a foundation built off of some ideology or ideas or concepts or perceptions of reality that are rooted in the pale supremacy. So to say, you know, the most obvious one was the job part, jobs where who's getting paid and what functional currency isn't the yielding of the food enough. Is it someone who's, who's herding the sheep or raising, you know, growing the cotton and then making clothes in exchange for foods? Isn't all of that enough? Like you said, when community is the goal and not jobs, then only the community can determine how much needs to be planted where and for what purposes and who's going to do what and who's good at what, like you said. So, oh yeah, she wants every, she's looking at like, oh, y'all can't, y'all can't do what we do and create this scarcity and uh, poverty and, and and set it up systematically like we do. You all, you know, there's a problem with you all in that you can't do uh, pale supremacy to the people in the land. That's basically what I heard between the lines. She's not, remember, we have to start saying this, the planet is ours for, for white autochthons. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're in Kentucky, doesn't matter if you're in California, it doesn't matter if you're in um, London, it doesn't matter where we are on the planet, the planet is ours, thanks to Clark McClellan, former NASA, NASA, NASA astronaut, revealing that. So she, again, is looking at, oh, it's not being developed, where is your origin? That mm -hmm. one, where is your origin? You, she's coming with what she was taught in school. And then let's not forget, what if they are actually trying to develop the land, but they're being sabotaged? Mm -hmm. See, they never talk about that. That's why her and even the Black um, entrepreneurs, Black business people, everyone wants to ignore race, 
They want to ignore pale supremacy in business. They want to ignore that like that's not a function. As long as they're on top, they don't care. But if they're not on top, then they're going to sabotage you. Music industry, entertainment, they're going to sabotage. And that's something that's a factor and a variable that we have to consider when things don't work out as they publish. There's another reason. Now, that's just on the, the flip side of that. But she's coming. She's a failed supremacist. Yes. Somebody said in the comments, if it's not a source of wealth, then give it over. <laughs> what she's saying that. is, if they had the land, they would know how to uh, take advantage. Mm -hmm. They would know how to, um, the other word I want to use is not take advantage, but they would know how to use and to um, abuse, if you will. Yes. They would know exactly. how they know they know they already have she had the blueprint in mind what to do, but they can't do it because there's too many South Africans that own that land. And because they're where they're at mentally, she said we can't breach that because the fight was you guys came down from the Dutch, the De Beers, and took over the land and at the time prior to South Africa or the apartheid system falling, they had the the De Beers. Not just only diamonds, but the Amorites in general, they had, they made up 10% of the population had 90% of the land in South Africa. Yes. So she still got that mentality that, look, you guys got all this and you're not doing nothing with it. You're not raping, robbing, pillaging, you're not utilizing, you're not, you're not being a, a colonialist. You're not coming with a colonial mindset. You're not, you're not raping, you're not. You're not, you know, come on, take it over, develop it. You're not yeah. doing that. So she doesn't like that. I agree. Thank you Everybody's for uh, fed up with black people. Uh, thank you for responding, Chief, with that. Very wise answer. Okay, Onafe is next. Greetings. Greetings, Autochthons. Yes. I have your um your video queued here. People, except for black people. Interesting. Everybody's getting fed up with black people, except for black people. Interesting to see the black communities in Chicago and New York screaming bloody murder now because these illegal immigrants are coming into your towns. I've been warning you black folks in the inner cities for years. You know what he wants to say. I've been trying to warn you niggas. <laughs> The white liberal politician is your enemy. Malcolm X said it in 65. He's a fox. He says that he's going to help you for his own personal agenda. But yet you'll keep voting for these white fucking liberal politicians that don't give a f about you. Every election, 92% of the black vote goes to mm -hmm. Democrat. If yeah. that just drops to 80%, the Republicans will win in a landslide. We don't need all of them to wake up. We just need about 5% of them to wake up. The other 80% of them niggas can stay asleep. <laughs> <laughs> they can stay in their coma. I don't understand, man. They just got this allegiance to liberals. I don't know why. It's like in a black culture, they feel that they're obligated because they're black. They should vote for a liberal politician. Well, Everybody's getting fed up with black people. Except so my question, Chief, is do you agree with the Amorite that liberals and Democrat Democrats are not here to help so-called black people? Yes, uh, because if you do look at the history of the Democratic Party, it was created by the KKK. The Constitution, when it was active, when it was alive, the Constitution was where you had your constitutional rights. So it's a contradiction for a Black person to call themselves a Democrat and want to cite the Constitution when the party that they're voting for was created by the KKK and their purpose was to scare black people back in the late 1800s after, um, uh, I guess, the Dred Scott was 1857. So after that, it was to scare black people from becoming Republicans. And this is what a lot of people don't know. The Republican Party was who Abraham Lincoln was with. Abraham Lincoln was not a Democrat. He was a Republican. And he said... The Dred Scott decision is a bad decision. We don't have to honor it. However, it's still in the books. And so the men who are KKK that became politicians and lawyers and judges, et cetera, they're silently 
upholding that. So I'm this, those. This video here is the type of video that makes me smile from ear to ear because it shows how stupid black people are. You're not doing them no favors by not calling them stupid. How are you going to vote for a Democrat, which in this analogy would be the Fox, mm -hmm. and your constitutional rights come from being a Republican? And now it seems that black people are waking up and realizing that the Democratic Party is using them. All it is is the Democrats or the KKK that run on that ticket so they can get the black vote. So black people are voting for their uh, continual overseers and oppressors. Great video. I like the video. Gratitude, Chief. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. So we got another good one here. Adapa's up next. Let me get this video, make sure it's right. Okay. When you think about... Okay, one second. Let me get a dab of on. Wow, wow. Greetings, Adapa. Wow, what? Wow, what? So we'll go from the beginning to the two minute, 22 second mark. Sex tourism in the Gambia, let's be honest, we believe it's a white thing. And when we hear about it, we see YouTube documentaries and clips like this. I believe the minister have to understand that his country is being labeled as a sex tourist destination. It's going to be very difficult to take away sex tourism from a country that is mostly dependent on tourism. Are you saying that uh, foreigners and tourists are treated better than Gambia? Yes. Yes. They're free. It's, it, there's We're there's no free. argument about that. Most of the Gambians are lame dogs. The government, you all have a lot of work to do because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And it usually depicts older white men or women like this. The Gambia has warned old British women to stop traveling to their country to pay young Gambian men for sex and love. Gambia is finally clamping down on British grannies flocking to their country searching for toy boys and is desperate for quality tourists to visit their country. The tiny West African nation has been a haven for older women seeking a lover or partner for many years. But the country is now sick of its reputation as a sex hotspot for mature women from Britain and Europe. And black people all over the world are outraged about Europeans going to the Gambia and sleeping with impoverished youth, typically men or women in the country. But let's stop the show. We gotta be honest. There's also another form of sex tourism happening in the Gambia, but it goes widely unnoticed. And I'll tell you who it's between. Older black women from the Western world diaspora, most notably the United States or the UK, and younger, poorer, Gami and men. Now, of course, we all know that it's been happening. Booty clapping sounds. Yes, and folks over there getting their cheeks clapped. And I really wouldn't talk about it because it wouldn't be a concern. But for the fact that we've had six ladies from the diaspora die in the last few months, now I feel like I need to talk about it because these relationships are not just, you know, sexual or marriage based. They're becoming violent. And I believe it's because of cultural dynamics not understood by both parties. Rewind! Let's go back to Art Kathy. Art Kathy was a very controversial YouTuber who lived in Nagamia. She had to leave based on some unfortunate circumstances. But to many people, was that the right spot? Oh, what? Mako. Yes. What are your sagely thoughts on this new development with black women and what are they missing or failing to assess with the cultural norms of Gambia versus their upbringing in the States? Uh, self evident. Uh, I will use, we'll start off with the Holy Tablets. Chapter 10, Tablet 12, that's the chapter on disagreeableness, where most women of the United States, and you can expand that to the West, that would include the Caribbean, they're possessed. And they have an ego bigger than men. A lot of men don't understand. Women got a <laughs> super duper ego. They were on that feminist stuff all these years. They have nothing to show for it. So if this woman here doesn't have no children, 
right? She might have a good job, but she has no children. She has nothing to show for it. And so now the biology of the body, which is one of the nine principles of everyone, everyone has nine principles. The biology is you do not have a man, no children past childbearing age, so the only thing she could do at that point is screw. And let's not forget the movie, How Stella Got Her Groove On, or Got Her Groove Back, the movie with Angela Bassett and Tay Diggs. And, and all, all I knew when I went, I went to the theater and watched the movie. So when I saw that, and I saw the look of ecstasy Angela Bassett had on her face in that scene, I said, oh boy, I could feel all... The black woman that anytime they go and watch that movie, that's the emotion they wanted to feel. So after that movie was over, what happened? They started going to the Caribbean. Now they don't want to go to the Caribbean. Now they want to go to Africa because I'm African American. I'll be with an African man. They're whoring. H O W, uh, what? <laughs> w H O R E. They're whoring. And so why are they doing this? Because their ego is too much to accept the fact that they bought into that feminist stuff, which was admitted to by the Rothschilds that they created so they could get the women out the house and tax them. So all these women talk about, ain't no man I pay my own bills that I said, yes, so the Rothschilds can tax your dumb black ass. So they paying their pimp his money. Ostuji and Tawa. Tawa. Adapa. Okay, James. Yeah. Greetings, uh, greetings, everyone. Greetings. Okay. Well, guys, it's like, are they recycling these stories? Because I believe they are. I believe the AI is creating the stories. It's creating a lot of these movies right now. And the government are already in bunkers underground. They know we're coming to this cataclysm known as the plasma apocalypse or the Phoenix phenomenon or pole shift. So they're using CERN to try to open up other realities, other dimensions to merge our timeline. Maybe in their crazy way, they think they're saving us, right? The simple question is if your agenda of CERN is to create and find all these scientific experiments when it comes to the colliding of these atoms and you've achieved everything you could possibly achieve in finding the things you spent billions and billions and billions of dollars to do this why do you need another one why do you need a bigger one why do you need to go right back on top of switzerland stern's corporation released this was not made up by anybody else of the actual footprint of the new CERN that's going to be created it almost touches Davos. It circles the entire nation of Switzerland. For what? To collide more atoms? Come on. Use your simple mind and ask a simple question. When you add up all the CERNs around the world and all the ones that are planned, you're talking trillions of dollars that are being spent underground for something that 99.999% of human beings will never be able to see. Why? What are you really doing? And that's why I believe that it's not really about scientific experiments. It is about portals. It is about veils. It is about opening things up. In predictive programming, they begin to have to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. So to desensitize yourself, there's an entire generation that's open to portals. All they have to do is watch Stranger Things. The old guys. So. My question to you, Chief, is what is the purpose of CERN and what are they trying to accomplish by creating antimatter? Right. 
Rob, right, greetings. They're not, create, they're not creating antimatter, James. You watch that movie Angels and Demons with Tom Hanks? What they're doing is they're going into another dimension, which is the dimension of anti-matter. Then when they bring it into this plane, it has to be isolated. It cannot touch any molecules. It cannot touch any atoms on this level, which is the level of matter. Because if they touch, it's like you have a, a cathode and an anode, or your negative and your positive. If they touch directly, they're going to spark short out, burn out the poles, just like on a light bulb. So you have to have what a filament, which is the container, to keep the antimatter from touching matter, because it's coming from a different plane and a different dimension. The portal is already there, James. This is before the uh, eclipse. There is a video I've shared. It should be in White Work, or excuse me, my White uh, News Network. Um, the woman's a, a physicist or a doctor. Uh, she's a doctor, but she knows physicists at CERN. She said that they already have a portal open. The portal is already underneath. The CERN that he's talking about that they're building, the, he told, she said they told her, she had an interview on Rumble, that the portal has already been opened at CERN. And there's beings that have come in to this plane. One of them came in and left and left its scarf behind to show that it's there. So you can watch um, Doctor Strange. Multiverse of Madness, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Watch the other movie, which is uh, the Avengers Endgame. Watch Quantum Mania. All those are now dealing with time travel. Oh, and don't can't forget the series Loki on, on uh, Disney. If you have Disney, watch the series with uh, Loki. Because that series talks about multi- Dimensions on a multiverse where there's Lokis from different dimensions. You got a kid Loki, you have a being Loki, you have a black Loki, a dark skin Loki, rather. You have all of that. So they're all talking about portals. They're trying to get out into go to another dimension. This ain't about trying to find the God particle. That's what they're telling the public. You already have the God particle in you. Let me say this again in case anybody missed what I just said. They say looking for the God particle, right? Yes. Isn't, now, I'm going to use their book as a reference. In Genesis, Genealogy of Aset, which they call Isis, which is Greek, they said... It said there that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, void was upon the face of the deep. And then when God created man, he blew his spirit into man, and man became what? A living soul. So you already have the God particle, niggers, not Amorites. Niggers got the God particle. That's what everyone's always trying to imitate them and copy them. It's all good. My bad, my bad. Right? They're on top, but they try to and look down at you, but they try to imitate you. When you're up at the top on the mountain, you don't come down or lower your vibratory frequency like that to fit in with people. Of that, of, you don't do that. Not when you're not going to sit there. Well, I got a a twenty room mansion. Uh, 700 acres, got a staff of 50. I think I'm going to go to the ghetto, hang out with him. No. That doesn't happen. Especially if they know that you're loaded. Yeah, that's just a recipe for disasters. They say more money, more problems. So it is not about finding the God particle. You already have the God particle. You already have the spark. They're trying to get out into another dimension. And based on what the woman was saying, they have a war going on over time. That's why I say if you have Disney+, Plus, go watch the Loki series, the first two seasons. 
They're showing you about the time travel, him going into dimensions, and then to the point where he's in another dimension, and then he's able to go seconds before his reality occurs. Then they start showing the reality of of things. Uh, what was the what was that other movie? Um, yeah, that was in game, and where um, uh, David Banner met the master, and then they started discuss showing timelines. That is what's going on, James. Not looking for no God particle. And the portal is already open. They already have it there. What has been stated is that they have been creating different dimensions. That multiple dimensions are actually occurring right now. And this is why I'm telling people to pay attention. I remember writing stuff down for an atopin and I remember the meeting I had and wrote it down. When I look at my book, it's not there. And I said, okay, what's going on here? So everyone, you know, be vigilant. Watch what you're writing, who you're talking to, and make sure that that timeline and that reality is fulfilling itself. Because I'm having a feeling that because they're trying to go, they've opened the portal. It's right underneath the CERN. It's already there. That they're trying to go back, change time, and create a different reality, so they can they can say, I don't care if they want to stay trapped down here. I don't think anybody does. But if we have the opportunity to go to another dimension, a higher level of existence, we're not staying here. We're out, outie deuces. But what's the old saying? The people that are miserable, that get their kicks off of suppressing people. They don't want you leaving. They want you to stay here. Just, uh, what is it, Ragnarok? Did you see Ragnarok? I have not seen that one. Oh, gosh, you better watch Ragnarok with Thor. Ragnarok, you never saw Ragnarok? I, I don't remember it if I have. No, you, you didn't. Because then you'd, under, you'd understand what I meant by that statement about not being able to leave. Anybody who has not seen Thor Ragnarok, watch it. But that's it. They, they're, they, this is what they're trying to do. And so by us doing the magic, we're tying into that unseen world to say, hey, we want to keep the timeline where it's supposed to be and not let them change it. So, uh, James, you also had sent this to me. Did you? Yeah, want to... yeah I have a couple more questions. Let's do it. Uh, I just want to know, uh, do you think there is a nefarious agenda to what CERN is doing? And um, is it a coincidence that Peter Higgs, the man who discovered the Higgs boson, dies on April 8th? No coincidence. The nefarious purpose is not what they think it is, James. Let's overstand something. Amorites love to go into realms, dimensions, and do stuff that they don't have experience, expertise, no guide. That's why I use the analogy of a hunter. If somebody, what do, what do, I do it myself. If somebody went and said, hey, we're going on a, a trip to a safari, right? We could hunt over in Africa. We're going to pay for everything. One thing you probably will ask them, is there going to be a guide? Right? Yes. And they'll say, oh, yeah, we got about 12, we got a dozen guys that's going to be coming. We're going to break up into two different parties. Okay, now you're like, bet. Why do you want a guide? You want to be led in the right direction and have somebody who knows what they're doing. Well, well be specifically knows what they're doing in what regard for people that don't know hunting. Yes. No, no, no. I, I'm saying explain that. I, I, I know, but I'm saying just say that for a guy. Like most people don't, they don't equate. Well, you went on a safari. What do you need a guide for? Most people don't right. see the connection. So if you could please just, you know, quick synopsis on that. Um, well, the importance of a guide. Right. If so, for instance, if you are out hunting, you would want to. If you've never hunted before, or you don't know the area, you would want to have somebody who's experienced there and knows the dangerous animals or territory or what happens on a daily basis in that area. So you don't get hurt. 
<laughs> because that area is live. The winds can shift on you. You're going yes. one way, the winds shift. And then what the worst thing is think you're hunting this way into the wind. Some people might not notice that. And they, they've been going in this direction for three hours. The wind shifts one hour. And the next minute, a, a predator comes up and jumps from, from behind because it was smelling them in an opposite direction. Yes. All right. So I'm not hunter. I just, you know, look at things logically. So you see, they are going into a realm that they have no lay of the land of that dimension. So any evil that they think they're going to do, they're going to learn evil real quick in going into a dimension that they don't know what entity is there. They don't know the frequency, the resonance. They don't know if the entity is agreeable or disagreeable. They have no clue. They just want to order, well, just open a portal up and go someplace. No clue. So the nefariousness is they will open up stuff. If you watch um, Hellboy, did you see the movie Hellboy? Yes. Okay. So you see they had the thing. He had the thing, some electric glove, and then they had the, the, the they opened up a portal in the movie at the beginning of the movie, the, the, the Hellboy, and, and then they said something came in. Because they caught them before he could finish off the ritual of what raising the seven sleeping giants, which would be equivalent to the Anunnaki. Yeah. And didn't know any idea of what's in that realm. And so those entities sent Hellboy to act as the key opener to open the portal up for those sleeping gods to come back into this plane and take it over. They always think they can make a deal or negotiate with the devil or with a being that's more powerful than them. Like what you bring into the table, well, you wouldn't have been, if I wouldn't have got you up, yeah, that's true, but thanks for waking me up. And now we'll dissipate your atoms. <laughs> So that's what I mean, James, that the nefariousness is, yeah, it's evil, but they think they're going to get something like, I'll be an overseer. you got to understand, a lot of the people that's ruling on this planet, this plane, this dimension, they're not um, uh, public servants and public officials, they're overseers. And that's what you have to start calling them. They are slave overseer, overseers, they are slavers. This is what they do. They'll do whatever rituals they have to do to get in that position. Once they're in that position, they will press down on you, put pressure on you, and all of that stuff. So that's why I said our remedy is the magic. The remedy is the rituals, the ceremonies. Because that's what they're doing. So when they come into contact with you and they had an intent on trying to do something, let's say from afar, oh, it looked like we could get them and then as they come closer to you, they start feeling your auric field. And they're like, nope, not going to mess with this guy. Nope. This guy, he, he knows who he is. He's, he has an awareness about him. He's unpalatable. Nope. We need somebody that's in fear, that's scared, that, oh, we're going to get in trouble. That's the people they're looking for. They're looking for those type of people. Right. Um, I have one more question for you. Yeah. Um, so if these, uh, so if the portal is already there, yes, why does CERN need nine accelerators and two decelerators? And why do they plan on building another LHC? Are they building those, um, gliders on the areas where portals are? Uh, that I'd have to see where the ley lines are for number one. Number two, don't you see there's already a portal open up at the main CERN there in Switzerland. That guy said they're going to build another one that encompasses the whole because that CERN is between France and Switzerland. And Switzerland's building their own CERN. Saskatchewan got one right next door. Nobody didn't even know about it. They got an LAC Saskatchewan. They have one in Chicago. 
I got the whole list of the LACs in North America. So all we heard about was CERN. The bigger question is, were those other ones active during the eclipse? Right. Because I'm, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of they want to set up a network. Why would they do that? To set up a portal network and then start mapping out the different dimensions so they know, okay, you go from CERN, it'll take you to this, to this galaxy or this dimension. Okay, and then when you have one, where does one from Saskatchewan take you? Where does one from Chicago take you? They're building, they have one, I think, in Iowa as well. Where, did, where does that take you to? Then they want to start mapping it out like the TV series Stargate. So they'll start traveling. That's how they travel. They're not traveling from no rocket ship, um, space shuttle nonsense. They're not traveling. That they're, they're not going there. They can't leave the planet. Phil Nye, the science guy, revealed that. We're in an aquarium. And as much as they use nuclear energy, the masters contain that. So they're dabbling, James, in going into different dimensions. And in the process, with the portals open, there's entities that are coming in this plane that we can't see. And we're going to forget the, um, you know, the jab or whatever. It'll start taking people over. And if that was part of why they were developing what they call the jab, which is actually just a body area network enhancement, inside of the human body using nanoparticles, then that entity from the other realm is what guided the scientists on this plane in how to build it. All you got to do is watch that movie, um, Constantine, with Keanu Reeves. Okay. All right? Uh, much appreciated. Ashok Gador. Ashok Gador. Can't hear you. Rahuat, Chief. Rahuat. Rahuat. Um, so my question is with regards to the Iran-Israel conflict. Yes. Uh, first of all, what effects do you think it would have on our planet if it escalates? Is this a video I need to watch first, or I can answer the question first? Um, whichever way, it's up to you. Okay, so let's just play the video first, Suta. I think that's perfectly justified um, to, to think they should respond because they have been attacked. But we are urging them uh, as friends uh, to think with, with head as well as heart, to be smart as well as tough, and to recognize Iran suffered this defeat because the attack was a failure. The world can see uh, what a malign influence they are. And I think that the right thing to do is not to escalate. I warmly welcome the Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Gutierrez. The Middle East is on the brink. The people of the region are confronting a real danger of a devastating full-scale conflict. Now is the time for maximum restraint. It's time to step back from the brink. It's vital to avoid any action that could lead to major military confrontations on multiple fronts in the Middle East. Civilians are already bearing the brunt and paying the highest price. And we have a shared responsibility to actively engage all parties concerned 
to prevent further escalation. All right, so in regards to your question, Tiffany Rawat, uh, in regards to your question, first, let's get something straight. And we just found this out, I just happened to see this, because I, I like watching documentaries, a lot of them. We saw a documentary the other day, saw so she knows what I'm about to say here. The Middle East is Northeast Africa, and it sits on the African tectonic plate. Okay. So what they are calling Israel, that's Africa. It's sitting on the tectonic plate, number one. Therefore, the fight between Israel and Iran and all of that stuff that's going on there, that's again our land that they're fighting over because they want to bring in the, the, the Jebusites want to bring in their Messiah. They don't they don't believe Jesus of 2,000 years ago or Yahshua was the one. So they disregard him, they consider him a bastard. Yet the rabbis believe there's eight genders. Just y'all meditate on that, study that, we can go into that. Why did you say that, Chief? And I'll explain. So they believe he was a bastard. So they don't consider him the, the, the savior. Now, the people who are there are from Poland and Russia. They are converts yes. to the Judaic religion. Judaico or Yehuda, that is the correct pronunciation with the Y, not with the J, because there's no J in Hebrew. What is happening is they want that area they also want the area with Gaza, they want to create another canal and not have to rely on the Suez Canal going through Egypt. Oh, yes, that's what it is. They, their goal is, they, they, I saw the plans. They plan to clear that whole Gaza, the whole north part, they're going to go all the way up to the sea and then dig the canal and I think they want to get this done by 2030 or 2031, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So this is what they want to do. So now, if like what happened with in Egypt, where that boat was put so, pushed sideways in Egypt going through the canal, and it jammed up all the maritime traffic, because you can go through there and you save time. But if not, you got to go all around, go south around Africa, go up the west coast of Africa, the north, West coast of Africa through the Mediterranean and then hit the ports in either UK, Europe, France, Spain, etc. That that cost will, that's going to cost more money. Yeah. Say that again. I said it would affect trade. Yeah. So so what it is is Israel wants to have their own because it's something like five trillion dollars a year or fifty trillion dollars a year goes through the Suez. So Israel. You know how the Jebusites are. They want to get in on the action. Yeah. They want that. And they said they'll be able to have that where they won't even have to rely on having to go through Egypt. So the escalation that's occurring is interesting in the fact that there's predominantly quote-unquote Muslim countries in that area, but they are not helping the Palestinians. Not Jordan, not Saudi Arabia, not Kuwait, not United Arab Emirates. None of the Muslim countries are coming to the aid. So to me, they're all sellouts. All this free Palestine, Saudi Arabia got money for days, money to burn. That's our land too. That oil is ours too. They pushed our ancestors out from there, south down into the Sudan, and then took it over. That is sitting on a tectonic plate. So I don't care if they escalate that. The escalation is going to show who's really going to assist because that's Iran firing on Israel for other reasons, for what happened to them, not for what happened in Gaza or Palestine. They're not, they're not fighting for the Palestinians. And the people who are the Palestinians, they ain't the original. The people from the Palestinians, they're not the original. They migrated there. You see, this is where the, there's an old book called Who's Who on the Planet. Mm -hmm. 
That's an old book. I got it. That book talks about everybody who's who on the planet. Now you see that came up. It's on the tectonic plate. And you see that the people who are calling themselves Egyptians are running into problems because they can't hide the fact that, okay, you're worshiping the law, but the Egyptians worship the Natiru. And you don't dress like them. You don't speak their language. You don't speak the hieratics, the Meroic script. You don't speak none of that. You speak Arabic. Exactly. So if you speak Arabic, you are not the ancient Egyptians. I am. You are. Everyone yeah. on here is the ancient. And so this is the problem now because what is it again? Economic loss is what's going to happen when people find out, well, these are, they are invaders. The Arabs over in Egypt are the same as the Amorites who came from Europe and, and England and came over here and got our ancestors out the way, then we classified them, say, oh, <coughs> excuse me, the Indians don't exist, they died out. Too much, nice, too much. nice and convenient. But yet, the emblem of America is at the British Museum that you went to and got pictures of. I'm like, okay, now, explain this. Exactly. Oh, this is metaphorical. Metaphorical, not from 1798. You don't do metaphorical niggers. From 1798. You know how dangerous that is to have a picture like that in existence? That's and say, oh, it's just, it's just metaphorical. It's just symbolic. No, that ain't symbolic. They're telling you the artist knows that the people that was there in the Americas was niggers and still is niggers. And the planet is a nigger planet. Absolutely. And you can only get that from being white. And so the escalation is going to come to the point, like I said, where are all the Muslim countries to help what's happening in Palestine? They're all doing, oh, we're going to do a, a, a motion at the UN. We're going to do a resolution at the UN. Oh, we're going to go to the ICJ. We're going to go to the ICC. All this stuff there. So how, how, how come y'all can't do nothing? Because the people in Palestine are not the originals. The Israelis aren't the original. Notice they use the word Israeli and not Yisrael. See, this is why language is important. Those people are Russian converts. They are Jews. They weren't even supposed to be there. After the Second World War, they were supposed to be able to go any place else but Palestine. And that deal was violated. So can you repeat that? Yes, the people calling themselves Israelis or people who are in the West that want to move there to say we need our own homeland because they're using the Bible, Bib El, as a script to justify their actions. So they're using the magic of the Bible to justify why they get land, steal land, take land. And so when they did that, the deal was prior to the Second World War ending, they said, okay, because they were kicked out of France, Germany, again, kicked out of all of them. They said, okay, they can go any place else, South America, America, the West, but they can't go. The deal was they were not supposed to go to what's called Palestine or Philistine. They were not supposed to go there. That deal got amended. So now the average Jew says, oh, we want to have our own homeland. That's why they use the word Jew. And that's a mistake. They, they, they reveal their fraud. They're supposed to say Yehud. Yes, because there's no letter J in, the, in that language. They're supposed to say Yehud. Because in the Hebrew, it would say Yehud, which was one of the 12... Bain Ben Israel or Ben Yisrael, Yehud was the last remnant of Yehud, uh, Dan, and Ben. And the last remnant of Judah was white. The, the, the Lord was upset with Israel and removed them from his sight. Hmm. None existed except what the tribe of what they say, Judah. And then that's further in the New Testament. Yahshua says, I was not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Yisrael, 
which is Benai Yehud. So any Jew calling themselves a Jew is confessing they are synagogue shil satan. Yes. They supposed to say Benai Israel. They don't even say Benai Israel, Benai Ibrahim. They'll say Ibrahim is their father because he's the one that got them out the cage and, and, and got them walking upright and um, teaching them how to wash themselves. You see, they get intense over here. I don't know how it is over in um, uh, London now. They're it's very dry over here in the West. Okay. Where we're at, and they're talking about, they're not saying it, but they're going to want to start putting water rations, and they're going to start telling people, oh, you're going to have to bathe. You know, they, it's going to happen. They're going to say you're going to have to look at bathing once or twice a week. They, that's their degenerate gene coming it's back. Like, where Oh, yeah. man, I didn't bathe for a month. <laughs> like the royal family over here, yeah. Yes. So all of that, um, Tiffany, is to show that that fight there in the Middle East is two foreigners fighting over land that is really not theirs. That's what's going on. And then once you get into the history, now you go, you talk about Iran, the Assyrians, niggers. There's people, I saw the video on TikTok, the guy said, no, the Assyrians and the Assyria or Syria, Iran, it's all niggers. They said that whole area was niggers. If you look at the old sculptures, you look at their beards, their beards are curly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in the British Museum too, yeah. So again, niggers is a beautiful thing. Niggers have been all over the planet. And the problem is they have created a fraud that allows them to reap an economic windfall. That's the problem. Because now if you say, well, hold on a second. Uh, London is not part of the McKenzie family or the McCormick family. None of them can lay claim to them because they're descendants of the Normans. And they admit that the Normans invaded what they call Albion or Great Britain. So if the Normans, where did the Normans come from? Normans come from Europe. So all the people over there in the United Kingdom, you know, uh, we're, we're stiff upper crisp and upper crust, and we do these sorts of things and and and, and talking to the proper and everything. That's the hot. That's acting. That's the hot. The fact that they're not even from there. What well, all you have to do is say, Cheddar Man, Cheddar Man, the first Britain, ten thousand years old. Nigger and an Amorite, it was an Amorite who reconstructed the bones. So when Amorites are reconstructing bones and making them niggers, that tells you something. Yeah. Oh, he know there's no getting away from niggers. That's what it tells you. <laughs> no. That's why women from Great Great want to go to Gambia. They said they want the darkest nigger out there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All you dark man, watch out now. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Tiffany. Thank you Tell very me. much. All right, we're gonna bring in X Man. Rawa, greetings. I can't hear you, even though you're unmuted. I heard a clicking sound. Was that your mouse? No. Can't hear you. I have your video and I have your question. I'll play the video while you work on that. Nobel Prize winning giant of theoretical physics, Peter Higgs, has died. In 1964, Higgs famously predicted the existence of a new particle that helped explain how matter was formed after the Big Bang. Known as the Higgs boson, sometimes called the God particle, its existence was proven almost 50 years later at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, helping expand our knowledge of the universe and winning him a Nobel Prize in 2013. 
Colleagues at the University of Edinburgh call Higgs a pioneer who inspired generations of scientists. Oh, great. You're there. Yeah. All right. So, Chief, you need to see this video again. Let me play. Nobel Prize winning giant of theoretical physics, Peter Higgs, has died. In 1964, Higgs famously predicted the existence of a new particle that helped explain how matter was formed after the Big Bang, known as the Higgs boson, sometimes called the God particle. Its existence was proven almost 50 years later at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, helping expand our knowledge of the universe and winning him a Nobel Prize in 2013. Colleagues at the University of Edinburgh call Higgs a pioneer who inspired generations of scientists. What? What? So, wrong way, can y'all hear me? Wrong way, too. We can hear you. Wrong way, you put it now. Wrong way, why the talk is white work. Um, if you would, please. Share your supreme thought and insights about this. And do you think that old P. Higgs left on this solar eclipse? Did they you think he left? Oh. There you go, Chief. Tell me. Tell me. Uh the, the, the fact that they, when they reported that he happened to die on this day of the um of the eclipse um we need to see the the um eulogy we need to see the proof the proof the, the report the not so much the death certificate but the publishing that he's actually dead and and then the reason why I say that we need to see the, the um, death notice. The reason why I say that is it's been revealed that that eclipse was orchestrated, that it wasn't a real eclipse, that it was artificial. That has came out. And with it coming out that it was artificial, the company was able to create a fake sun and the company was out of Europe and that fake sun, they were able to put it up into the sky where people would see it, similar to like Project Blue Beam. And so, again, when those these events happen, we find out, oh, they lied to everybody. This bring, reminds me of when Bobby Hemet talked about one time he did a, a lecture or people were calling him to do a lecture. He didn't really want to do the lecture, so he said, oh, I'm sick, and, and just lied and said he was sick. Then two days later, he got sick. So he said, we're in that time where even your lies will manifest. So I'm saying, okay, we're finding out now that that wasn't an eclipse. However, we were told, there was an Amorite woman that said, where the sun is, where the, where the uh, uh, sun is going to be, it's not going to be in the sky for that eclipse to occur, number one. We saw the star charts. We saw that. I showed everyone the star chart of where the uh, all of the planets that would be lined up. We saw the video of a guy who, on the day of the eclipse, said, that can't be the moon. Why? The moon's over here on the right. So if the moon's over here, What's this that's coming in front of the sun? If the sun's here, the moon's over here, what's causing the eclipse? Then we said, oh, that's Nibiru. And that's why they didn't want people. And then even people at the point, those people who were in uh, what they call the totality, who had their cameras out, they were saying there's something here that's blocking the sun. And it, that wasn't the moon. So they, um, him, 
transitioning as I watch that video again is making me think and pay close attention, everyone. It's making me think that this guy was able when they found the boat, the boat, because they said back in 1964, he made the prediction that 50 years later it occurred. Something tells me when they opened it up, he was able to transport back into time to his past self and tell him this is what was going to happen. So as the time is running this way for us, when that portal opened up, he was able to time travel while time's going this way. He time traveled back to tell himself that. Then 50 years later, it occurs. Now, on the day of an artificial eclipse that they created, what happens? Now he's got to leave. Not dead. He got to leave. Because now that would put him into conflict when he was the one that was able to uh, tell himself the past. Now that goes contrary to that movie Endgame where they went back in the quantum and said, no talking to yourself, no having no conversations with yourself, your friends, your family, none of that. So that means he violated that. And let's say for the sake of the discussion, it's valid. He violated it. And as he violated it, what happened? Now he has to leave because Anything going forward of him doing that violation is going to create what they call that um, paradox. It's going to create problems in the timeline because he went back and did something he wasn't supposed to do and told himself something that wasn't supposed to happen. And he did it. Now, the next thing with, with that is... I uh, look at the movie Contact. If anyone hasn't seen it, watch the movie. She was able to travel to Vega and back so fast, it's like she never left. So when we did that ritual on that eclipse day, even if it was fake, that's the story they gave us. Okay, so you lied, gave us the story. We took that and used that energy to appeal to our ancestors and said, listen, y'all got to help us. This is getting out of, out of, this is getting beyond ridiculous at this point. Still real. Don't, don't be full because just like we got family, or for lack of a better word, like, you know what we're doing. You could, you have higher technology and y'all gonna just sit there and watch. Listen, when the shit comes up into the sky, that's when y'all go on, you're going to act like some black people, float in your crafts and just sit there. And we're not saying to intervene where it violates universal law. That's not what we're saying. We are saying where there are areas where you, that you can't assist us, you need to do that. Now, I can help them with a template of being white and okay. So unless they have the positive energy and just need direction, then you need to intervene and get involved because if you don't stop it, they're going to come up into the skies. They're going to come to other planets. They're going to go into other dimensions. There will be no limit to the evil that they do. None whatsoever. Bill Gates is talking about killing 80% of the population on live television, ain't nobody saying nothing. This man's talking about kill. Yeah, we can reduce the population. How do you want to reduce the population? You got to kill them. Nobody's saying nothing. Except okay. myself and the Autophans here. So now we're at the point where, yes, we have to go into that spiritual realm at your altar. If you got a, a silent room, you go out into the woods. And this is what we have to do. This is exactly what we have to do because there's just no other way. Like, it's beyond obvious at this point. And so when they went and did that, we did the ritual. And I look at that and I realized that was a two-hour ritual. That was That's a concert. <laughs> it, 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 even if whatever their, whatever their agenda, the fakeness, what they were doing, our stuff is real. 
The P.O. Yeah. is still real, still valid, super valid. Okay. Valid. And so stuff started happening after the ritual. Was that Puffy? Was Puff before or after the eclipse? It was sort of half and half. It was before. And, and, and then everything started happening. Yeah, yeah. All this stuff started coming out from yeah, different yeah. cars and, and the child trafficking and all that stuff started coming out, yeah. right? Charles is sick. Uh, what's her name? Come, uh, what's her name? Kate Middleton. They already know people who know know she's gone, or she's in the mental institution that they put her in. That's the book. Right. All of that stuff started coming out. They tell Charles, "Don't go to Australia. He still want to go." Right. They said he got turbo cancer. O.J. Simpson gone. So all of this, like I said. It's not a lot of us. It don't have to be a lot of us. And it said it was not going to be a lot of us. It wasn't going to be. But they that whole situation with the guy from CERN. And remember, I did a ritual and sent them the video of me doing a ritual on CERN. No response from CERN. So that means that energy from that healing fire that I did up here and sent the energy to CERN. If they took that or that data is being punched into another dimension, that energy from the healing fire that I did is in whatever dimension they're in. So it's cleaning up stuff. So they sucked it in like a black hole. And then wherever it comes out on the other side of that Taurus field, that energy is going to be here. And so I think that's why it's kicking back. And you're seeing the Puff Daddy stuff. You're seeing... Carl Schwab, they said he's sick. Nobody knows where he's at. He's supposed to be gravely ill. All of that stuff, all that energy is there. Couture, Jed Couture. So what happened? I'm going to. Yeah, turn your mic on so I can hear you. Tao Hat X Man. Yes, Metronaut Fu is up next. This is the hot topic. And I know it is one of Chief's favorites. So don't you all worry. <laughs> I have your uh, video here. I have one of two pulled up. Uh, so let me. mass pops up with waves of 83.7 feet in height what in god's name is this thing moving out of antarctica as you can see and then it moves up the coast of africa into the atlantic ocean watch this as we move into wednesday the 10th thursday the 11th which is today this is going on right now i don't know if these waves are actually hitting the coast or if this is some sort of glitch in the system but i've never seen anything like this this giant blob is showing 83.7 foot waves this does not seem to be any sort of storm system System. Let me zoom back out here. Let's move forward and see where this thing is projected to go. Watch this. Here's Friday the 12th tomorrow. Moving more up the African coast. Here is Saturday the 13th. We can see it start to wrap around the northern western coast of Africa up into the Atlantic. Here is Sunday the 14th. Monday the 15th. We are in the Atlantic Ocean with waves of 62.163 feet. This is just incredible. Here is Tuesday the 16th. And look, the entire thing is now in the Atlantic Ocean with averages of about 40 feet. There's 44. 33, 34.3. This is just very weird. What are we looking at here? Here's Wednesday the 17th, the last available data for this. And now we see the entire Atlantic Ocean, which as we've discussed is already months ahead of time as far as temperatures. And we're looking at this very odd anomaly coming out of Antarctica. Now watch, I'm going to backtrack. I'll show you where this thing begins. We'll go all the way back to Monday the 8th. This is where the anomaly begins. And sometimes it glitches out. It's very weird. Here's Tuesday the 9th. And there it is. Pops right up. It's almost like this thing shot out of Antarctica and up towards the African coast. And as we backtrack in hours, we go to 5 a.m., 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., 8 p.m., and that's where it pops up between 5 and 8 p.m. This thing does not exist, and then it does exist on Tuesday the 9th at 8 p.m. After that, it just slowly moves up into the... <laughs> Mass pops up with weight. <laughs> oh, 
好神奇哦。Mass pops up with waves of 83.7 feet in height. What in God's name is this thing moving out of Antarctica, as you can see, and then it moves up the coast of Africa into the Atlantic Ocean? Watch this as we move into Wednesday the 10th, Thursday the 11th, which is today. This is going on right now. I don't know if these waves are actually hitting the coast or if this is some sort of glitch in the system, but I've never seen anything like this. This giant blob is showing 83.7 foot waves. This does not seem to be any sort of storm system. System. Let me zoom back out here. Let's move forward and see where this thing is projected to go. Watch this. Here's Friday the 12th tomorrow. Moving more up the African coast. Here is Saturday the 13th. We can see it start to wrap around the northern western coast of Africa up into the Atlantic. Here is Sunday the 14th. Monday the 15th, we are in the Atlantic Ocean with waves of 62.163 feet. This is just incredible. Here is Tuesday the 16th. And look, the entire thing is now in the Atlantic Ocean with averages of about 40 feet. There's 44. 33, 34.3. This is just very weird. What are we looking at here? Here's Wednesday the 17th, the last available data for this. And now we see the entire Atlantic Ocean, which as we've discussed is already months ahead of time as far as temperatures. And we're looking at this very odd anomaly coming out of Antarctica. Now watch, I'm going to backtrack. I'll show you where this thing begins. We'll go all the way back to Monday the 8th. This is where the anomaly begins. And sometimes it glitches out. It's very weird. Here's Tuesday the 9th. And there it is. Pops right up. It's almost like this thing shot out of Antarctica and up towards the African coast. And as we backtrack in hours, we go to 5 a.m., 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., 8 p.m., and that's where it pops up between 5 and 8 p.m. This thing does not exist, and then it does exist on Tuesday the 9th at 8 p.m. After that, it just slowly moves up into the... Oh, why? Greetings. Do I need to play your second video or you want to talk about this one first? Yeah, I want to talk about this. Okay. Yeah, um, in CERN, CERN really do have technology capable of, some, uh, of such a nominee as this right here. Like, yes, you know, um, Can you come closer yeah. to your microphone? Okay, you hear me now? It's no, you so far away. Wow. Uh, okay. Now. Okay, it sounds a little better. I can work with that. Okay. Yeah, so do CERN, is CERN capable of with technology to create such an anomaly such as this and tear through the fabric of our, of our atmosphere? No, CERN, remember, CERN is creating a portal. And okay. so at Ar Antarctica, there's an island that the Rothschilds own in Antarctica. And you can't get there. You, nobody can fly there. You have to get permission to get there, and you have to go through London in order to do it. You have to fly from London, and that's of course you have to get who's giving the permission is the reptilians, and this is confirmed by um, what's his name, Eddie Griffin. So what that sounds to me, what that looks like, it looks like a ship, some type of craft that's underneath that Antarctica. All you have to do is watch that old that old movie. Alien versus Predator about the archaeologists going into Antarctica because they found a pyramid underneath there and then they went there and then there was the aliens and then the Predator and then all of that fun stuff and what that technology was that advanced that it cut a hole in one day and they said if they were to try to use that with the tools they have they said that would take them months to drill a hole like that and that was done in in a matter of 20 minutes, less than that, instantly. I, um, I'm i pretty sure you know, if you don't, you do now, that the poles have shifted. The magnetic poles on the planet have shifted. So what I see is this looks like the craft that's there in Antarctica 
is moving to be in um, compliance, if you will, with the poll shifts. And the fact that it's showing up on the radar, because I've seen, I've saw this video before, um, uh, you know, a few days after the eclipse. And again, when did this happen? After the eclipse. Remember, remember, CERN, the portal is already open at CERN. Remember, the gateway is already open at CERN. Now, the question is, and they know there are beings that have come and going. There are some beings that are coming and going. How they may not necessarily be physical. So, it's just like if you have a hole in a in a um, in a bucket that's filled with water, that hole that water is coming out. Now, if you don't, if you turn the bucket away from people, nobody's going to see. They'll just see a bucket. They won't know there's a hole in it, and water is coming out until they get flooded. You see what I'm saying? So I don't. I look at that. Looks to me like a ship, a craft that was nice and you know happy in Antarctica. The poles have shifted. The solar eclipse occurred, and so now it's moving up Africa. Don't know whether it's there to intervene or whether it's there to um, try to make its way to that portal. At CERN, with the with the you know purpose of wanting to go into that portal, if it knows where that uh, portal or where that where dimension is going to lead to, because it almost I'm just this is coming to me now. It makes me think that the invocations we did for getting the Dracos, the Satanists, etc., that they're going up there to be closer to a portal so they can get out. That's what that seems like to me because it's going up all the way up the coast of Africa and everyone can see this and know everyone's like, we're, you know, 60 foot waves, 75 foot waves, 60 foot waves. That means it's some kind of craft that's moving that is displacing the water that's causing the waves to occur. Or oh, not after, see, during the solar eclipse, caught on radar. So there you go. Yeah, right there. Cool. Much appreciated, Chief. Nah. -nah. Uh, okay, let me pull up the second clip here. The fair to you will be next and the last one for this shadow hour. Where's the fair to you? I don't see him. He's here. Uh, let me double check here. He's oh, is this the same? Yeah, uh, you don't see his camera. Okay, oh. all right, no worries. All right, so this looks like is this the same one? You just gave me two different links for the same one, Internet Fool. Oops. Okay. All right. So then, well, then that's everything. Um, stop share. So we will then wrap up. This has been a great hot topics today. I really appreciate everyone's attendance and, and exciting shares. I'm sure you found it stimulating chief. Is that right? Uh, yes, yeah, so it was stimulating. And just please keep in mind, full moon was on Sunday. So things are going to still be hectic if you've been running into anomalies and weird stuff. It's going to be like this until Thursday. Thursday is when the three days is going to be up. And then that's it. There's Everything's going to be um, relaxed in a relaxed state. So the timing couldn't have been any better. Anu has a question. Yes. Rawat Anu. Rawat Sam. Rawat all the Talkdens. Rawat Maku. Rawat. Um, on on X Man's question, when when you answered the, about the fact that these people may start coming up to the sky, that reminds me of on the on the Matrix, on the last Matrix, when Neo spoke with the actual Matrix, and the thing asked him what he wanted, because yes. Mister Smith kept replicating himself to to the point where it was gonna destroy the Matrix. Is that some kind of a similar thing there? 
Yes, because time is, time is relative. That's the old saying, time is relative. Mm -hmm. If we look back at where you were, where you're at now, and you see the time frame, or that movie, um, what's the movie? Um, Interstellar. If you saw the movie Interstellar. Mm -hmm. So let us look at this. We have ancestors. We've seen the pictures. We've seen the one with the uh, sister with the locks that was frozen that the Russians got her body mm -hmm. in a ship that she was in a ship and was frozen. You know they're going to take her cells and try to resuscitate her to see if they can find out what happened, how did you end up in the ship, what caused this, what was your life like, etc. They're going to do all of that. If they're, if they're not doing it yet, they are going to. So when you see that, I'm telling them, uh, barring, you know, without uh, being dishonorable, but I'm stating, okay, you all must see that they're going to come up. And because of the nanoparticles that they're spraying into the atmosphere, you must know one quark of a nanoparticle that has all of the knowledge of the other nanoparticles because they're all connected. They're all going to try to connect to a tower and it's self-building. It can, it can build itself. It can create its own structures. You do realize that it is going to find a way to get off the planet and be part of the environment. The book I have here, um, the the Beavians by um, uh, Riley Martin. I finally finished his book a couple of years ago. They talk about us uh, beings that are computer generated. Mm -hmm. So very much like we're going through with the artificial intelligence, they had that situation and they got tricked. And what happened was. People were going to this planet thinking they were going to get, um, you know, a better life, money. They could send it back to their family on Earth. And what was happening is those people were getting killed. And the computer was doing this, but giving people the simulation, thinking that the family went on another planet and was sending funds back when, in fact, that they got killed. This is in the book of Riley Martin, a black guy from Iowa or Indiana, and he ended up going to their planet. He ended up going on their ships. And so he talked about the different entities and beings. So this is what I'm appealing to our ancestors that's floating in the ships over the cities that people are seeing these, an these anomalous clouds. Like, come on now. Then I'd be, that's, be, that's speaking broadly. Not being specific with the Anunnaki, with the Natiru. There's no one else on the planet doing what I'm doing. There's no one else on the planet that's doing what you all are doing. Every one of you all are doing precedences. And it's like, look how bad, and just think about it. We're in different locations. So imagine how much we could do if we were we're able to get into one location. So you know why your mic might not work, your computer is jacked up, you can't log on to your um, MetaMask. That's the reason for the, but we're mind linking thanks to the computer and the crystals on the screens. Cool. So we're putting the ball, we're gonna take responsibility, yes, our mission, clean up the filth made by the non-submitting fools. This is what the Nuwabis forgot about. They're only focused on action. They ain't focused on the knowledge, on the, on, the, on the information. We said we, we will clean up the filth made by the non-submitting fools. That is our contract. It's in the goal book. And in exchange for that, we have to have our ancestors assist us because it's an ocean today out here. <laughs> so the Nuwabians are focusing on the, the messenger 
but not his message. Correct. 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 Shall we have my cool? Uh -huh. All right. So now we have that picture that you were just talking about, Chief. I just want to show everyone. Uh, yes. Mm. Almost, almost like she, she, she reminds she remind, her complexion reminds me of Erica Badu. She's just so beautiful, and you can tell it's like she's all races, <laughs> like her jeans can splice into an Asian look, a, you know, any any look on the planet. Look at her third eye pulse so deep. It sticks out. Or Eartha Kitt? Anybody. Wow. Well, they, all, those anybody. Come, all those looks come, you know, all those looks come from her, the eye cheekbones, the nose, the yeah. lips. There's no such thing as Asian eyes. See, these are the type of things we have to claim. No, Asians have nigger eyes. Yes. yes. That's what you have to tell them because that statue of Buddha, that's as, that's as nigger as it gets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's why when they put their hair in a bun, their hair can't stay like that. Mm -hmm. They have to put it in a bun and it moves around. Buddha's, if he got his hair thick, boom. And then and put that in a bun, you'd see it would be stationary and, and very curly, like in the statue. Hmm. Yes. I think thank you for the reminder of this image here. So um that does conclude all of the questions we have ready to present for today. And again, we thank you for your time and your sage wisdom, Maku. Thank you for being available to us. Much appreciated, everyone. Everyone at a great shadow hour again. Uh, definitely use your altars, do your rituals, your heka, your magic. That's how we're going to get through this. Yes. And don't ignore any intuition or subtleties. Much appreciated, everyone. Kashukador. Success to everyone. Kashukador. Kashukador.